Yahweh Bashem, Yahushai Bashem, Rakha Kodash. Shalom, la b'chayaryum, shal yashala. Peace to the election of the nation of Israel. Wa kahalayum la halahayinawa Yahuwah b'Hashem Yahushai b'Hashem Rechakodash. All praises to our power, Yahuwah b'Hashem Yahushai b'Hashem Rechakodash. Meaning, of course, Yahuwah, the Most High, His name in the Paleo Hebrew. And of course, his only begotten son, son's name is, of course, Yahweh Shai, who the world even calls Jesus Christ. Right? Most people call it the Most High God, but his actual name is Yahweh. All right. You have Yahweh Shai's son, by Hashem in the name Racham, meaning Spirit Kodash is holy, which I just utter in the Paleo Hebrew, which is the language that has been returned to us, Hebrew Israelites, which consists of so called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. We are the Lord's chosen people. We are the Hebrew Israelites. Okay. Returning back to our language, our customs, and the knowledge of Yahweh Bashem El Shai. Starting with the elect, that is. All right. Because two thirds of the nation of Israel, when they, of course, return to this knowledge on this side, are right, they're going to have to be destroyed and, of course, come through the, what's that, Zerai? All right. The seed. Which Zerai is he a seed by Habariath of the elect, all right, of the chosen of the nation of Israel, all right, the first fruits that is, okay, the elect, all right, of course, double honors, all right, uh, to the elders and apostles at Great Millstone, all right, or uh, I believe that Shinya Kabad, uh, yeah, we've got uh, our elders, which is uh. Said Shalayach Yum Nawa, all right. Uh, of course, of Great Millstone. Right, I'm the brother Mafug from Great Millstone Plain Tables Camp, located here in the city of Philadelphia. Coming again with another lesson of Kakodash, which this is just going to be a, a lesson through the spirit. Which I seen this article and it struck me, you know, Baha Baria or Basaki Ba. Rechakodash in the or Baha Rechakodash in the Holy Spirit or Spirit Holy. It says Americans are deep in trouble. Are, are yeah, Americans are deep are in deep trouble. Twenty three percent save nothing from paychecks. I mean, this is a heavy statement, or right, or kabad, a weighty, or a heavy statement. It says Americans continue to dig themselves in a deeper and deeper hole. While many have no savings, they continue to pile on debt and liabilities. All these problems will make the next recession difficult for most to get through financially. I must, of course, note that you know, the next, of course, recession or really the economic collapse is going to completely rock the world, all right, and especially you so called Americans, all right, because you have to understand that we're in a debt based system, okay, on credit, all right, and it's under what a fiat currency which isn't it backed by gold, all right, you have it where. 
The Federal Reserve was created back in what? You have it in tw uh, December the 23rd of 1913. You know, with this enactment of the Federal Reserve Act. All right, you have the Federal Reserve or the Fed is a central banking system of the United States of, of America. And I must note that it is a private entity, all right, a private corporation outside of the, the of course, uh, United States, okay? And it's a very wicked, all right, system, all right? Now, you know, just to, you know, I knew it this, you have this not about backed by actual, uh, uh, gold or silver or nothing, which is real wealth when you go into it. You have it here, where I put it here. It says the gold standard removed by president, and you have Richard Nixon. The government held uh, thirty-five dollars per ounce price until August fifteenth of nineteen seventy-one. And President Richard Nixon announced that the United States would no longer convert dollars to gold at a fixed value, thus completing, completely abandoning the gold standard. So you have it where, you know, your money that you have, all right, isn't backed by anything, all right? It's just basically, it's a fiat currency, okay? Which, uh, I just had to actually, uh, Definition of fiat, real quick. All right, or fiat currency. You have an incorporable paper money made legal tender by a government decree, all right, by order, all right, of the demon government being. <laughs> uh, you have it here in Great Babylon, all right. Let me get to fiat currency. All right. Fiat currency. A fiat currency is legal tender. All right. Which, you know, you have legal tender. Which, I'm just going to all these terms so I can make sure everything be on point. Like right. coins and banknotes that are accepted and are offered as payment for a debt. All right. It says whose value is backed by government that issued it. It says the U.S. dollar is a fiat money as the euro and many other world currencies. The approach differs from money whose value is underpilled by some type of physical or some physical goods such as gold and silver called commodity money. All right. And gold and silver is true money. All right. You got there. So you could go to the book of. Uh. Of uh, the book of Job or Iowa, which I'll go quickly get real quick. This is the book of Job, and then I'm gonna go into the article pretty soon, and then you know go from there. It's the book of Job, chapter one and three, and I, I believe I brought this at the my uh, past camp or over past camp, which we had over the weekend like that just went. And it says here, Ayawab 1 and 3. It says his, and this is talking about referring to Job. Right? It says his substance also was 7,000 sheep and 3,000 cam camels. In which, I, let, me, let me go up real quick. I'm going to read the start that one. It says, and there was a just man in the land of Uz whose name was Ayawab. And that man was perfect and upright, and one that feared the, the Lord, or feared uh, the power, and eschewed evil. It says, And there was born unto him seven sons and three daughters. His substance, all right, but you have it here. Substance is Maquana, all right, Maquana Baha Barth in Hebrew, which it reads here, is speaking about. What you got here, cattle, livestock, something bought property, all right, stock, all right, you know, and you, you know, having these things, you know, is actually having real true wealth and such, okay. 
And we being deprived of these things, you know, as uh, Hebrew Israelites, you know, for the most part being, you know, the best people upon the earth. I mean, we are in an oppressed state. You know, us as a, a whole, all right? Because, you know, we have Israelites that have, you know, a lot of some of these things and stuff, but not, of course, in the fashion in which we're supposed to, you know, in abundance, all right? The whole world in, a, in subjection underneath us, all right? Hebrew Israelites under, of course, Yahweh, well, Yahweh Shai, all right? Malak, Dawada, King David, all right? Went down. Alright, it says here, his substance was also 7,000 sheep and 3,000 camels and 500 yoke of oxen and 500 she asses and a great, very great household so that this man was the greatest of all the men of the east. Alright, this is going to be the book of Genesis 12. And two, or actually 13, Slakia. Yeah. I believe it's 13. This is uh, the book of Genesis. All right. 12, or 13 and 2. It says, And Abiram, all right, was very rich. All right. Abba, Father, Rum. Okay. Which I believe that is. Exalted father, yeah, Abba Rum. All right, in the Hebrew, okay. All right, continuing on, it says, was very rich in cattle, in silver, and in gold. All right, so he had what he had Ba Kasap, all right, in Kasap, which is silver. All right, that's tr this, this is true money, gold. You got. Zahab, all right. He was rich, all right. Which that's what's that kabad? Let me see in Hebrew. Which that's here to be heavy, weighty, to be rich, all right. Also means honorable, like we give double honors, you know. Showing your kabad, all right. To the elders and apostles, all right. You know, and this is why people look at us as like you no, know, we ain't shite. Because we don't have these things, but we have the true riches in Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shad. You, of course, having Za'amath is truth, all right? Well, you know, I can go in that in another lesson, but, I, you know, I want to just keep things in order with the scriptures I actually have. So, you know, going on, this is going to be back to this particular uh, article. It says, a new report. By Forbes states that 23% of 3%, nearly one in four Americans are saving not only one penny from their paychecks. It says in 2019, Saving Survey, First National Bank Omaha, Om, of Omaha ex examined American habit behaviors and priorities when it comes to saving, monthly spending, and retirement planning. And based on the fact that nearly 80% of Americans live paycheck to paycheck, the rest of the results of the survey, unfortunately, unsurprisingly, according to the survey, only 40% of Americans prioritize saving for their emergency fund, with 27% saying the, their highest priority is saving for their retirement. That's very low. It says 39% of Americans plan on outputting or putting the year's tax refund in a savings account. While the 25% have never withdrawn from their savings account. It says most Americans are optimistic too. With 60% reporting that they have somewhat or more are very likely to be on track with their savings by the age of 65. You guys see that these bankers have tricked a lot of you Americans. Alright. In their system because this is going to crash. There's going to be an economic collapse. And ultimately, they want that RFID microchip into the mark of the beast. Okay? Now, continuing with the lesson. I got a couple more Pequodium precepts. I got a lot, actually, but see how far we get through with this. This is the book of Ecclesiastes and the 
Bible, chapter 7 and 12, it says for Chakama, all right, is a defense, all right, wisdom. It says also, right, reading on, it says for wisdom is a defense and money is a defense, all right? You know, real money, as you see, is, you know, silver, gold, all right? All right? All right, you see money, and you see the Hebrew word right there is kasap, okay? Under money. You have silver, all right? Shekels, money, talents, okay? This is real wealth, money, okay? Not pay piece of paper, all right? <laughs> Alright, anyway, going on, it says, um, but the excellency of knowledge is that wisdom giveth light to them that have it, you know, and it definitely does, you know, it protect us from death, alright, um, you know, gives us, you know, the proper way to live, okay, yeah, et cetera, et cetera, is more things, but. I'm going to go now to the book of Ecclesiastes, right? Uh, I believe this is going to be 10, the 10th chapter. So, okay, I just messed it up. ECC 10. And I'm just going to read it off right now before it even goes up. It's, it's uh, going to be verse 19. All right, Ecclesiastes 12, or 10 and 19. It says... A feast is made for laughter, and wine maketh merry, but money answereth all things. All right, you have it where money, you know, you have, of course, money. All right, as as you see, kasap. All right, you know, it answereth all things. You have it where you, know, you could pay bills, you know, you can, of course, barter, trade, you know, have money and stuff, but most people are in debt. All right, as is written in the scriptures, the borrower is subject unto the lender. All right, you have it where the earth is given unto the head wicked, being of course the uh, Edomites, the red Hebrew Edomite. All right, or the so-called white man. All right, known as the so-called white people. All right, because they are not white; they're red. They lack melanin. Okay, the elite of them I'm speaking of right now, currently. All right, they're all Edomites. Okay. The Rothschilds, the Rockefeller, all these banking families, the so-called 1%, they're Edomites. And they're devils, and they're ruling over the people, all right, in wickedness, okay, with these practices, okay. When they ain't giving you, you know, proper money, and they're, geez, they, they, of course, uh, you know, using actually usury and such, you know, interest and all of that, all right. You know, and... You have it, the whole you know, world is pretty much <laughs> in uh, debt, okay, to these bankers, okay. You have it, America is what, it's currently $22 trillion in the debt. And I've read the other, I mean, I keep bringing it out, uh, well, I keep seeing it here and there, that the world debt, all right, is like, it's so high, it's like 200, I gotta go back and look at it, I don't wanna quote it without having it the right way, let me see, let me, let me see if I can pull up something real quick, yeah, so you have it, This was published according to the International or INF, the I, um, International My, International Monetary Fund. The global debt is at a historic highs, reaching 164 trillion. And this was back in 2016. You have it in currently in 2019. I mean, it, it's higher. I gotta see if I can even you know get that. Yeah, I think. Well, this is one. This got two hundred and forty-seven trillion. That's in that. That's that's that in two thousand eighteen. It's another number, but I gotta go back and go check. All right, but you know, just bear that as a note. All right. 
you know, and this debt is to the, the obviously, you know, the, the, these bankers, all right, the Edomites, all right, that have, of course, control, all right, of the world, all right, and they are the wicked, all right. So now, uh, going back to the actual article, and then I'll bring out also the Haggai. Let me see if I can get it real quick. Book of Haggai 1 and 6. All right, so this is Haggai 1 and 6. It says, Ye have so much and bring in little. Ye eat, but you have not enough. Ye drink, but ye are not filled with drink. Ye clothe you, but there is none warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put it into, into a bag with holes. You know, you have it where you work. That money... That you receive this 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 fiat currency, this rubbish, you know that they give us, you know. We don't even get what is sufficient for us to be able to live, okay. You no know, proper. You know you have it where you gotta, of course. Um, you know, kind of stretch your money. You know, a lot of people, you know, gotta. You know, find a means to, you know, get food, you know, in other ways where, I mean, you have it where some people depend on a lot of these various, um, what do you say, these government programs, all right? Um, donations from other people, you know, th you know, it's a, it's a lot of things, you know, and it's obvious because of the so-called white man being wicked and setting this up this way. Okay, where you you get a job, you know, you're not being paid enough, okay, but they want you to work X amount of hours for a wee bit of wages, all right? You know, it's putting a bag with holes, okay? When you get that check, as you're saying here in this, right here, Americans continue to dig themselves into a deeper hole, all right? While many have no savings, they continue to pile on debt and liabilities, the people then... You know, trying to pay, you know, their debts off via credit cards. And that, of course, puts them in more debt. All right, let's go back to some more of this information. It says here that, but a few of those decent decent statistics don't track from the scary ones. It says such as 60% of Americans do not set annual savings goal on 74% Americans put 10% or less into of their monthly payment. A paycheck towards savings. In fact, 23% reported that they put in 0% of their monthly paycheck towards saving. It says almost half, 49%, said they only have enough liquid funds to cover living expenses for 0 to 3 months. Okay? It's like your rainy day fund, I believe. You know, right here. No. It's any like emergencies. It says in, in a twenty three percent attribute high cost of living to why they don't have so much as savings and savings as they would like. You know, and you have it where the rent is you know being raised every year in certain places. You know, you you know you're renting or leasing a place. And, I mean, like I say, you get a barely enough money. You got to pay, of course, utility bills, okay? And you're just, you know, got to pay your car note. You know, all these various things. Transportation, gas, fuel, petrol, right? It's just hard, okay, over here. Because of the damn devil. But this all is set up from the Lord, I must note. All right, as it's written in the book of Ecclesiasticus or Sirach, in the Prophet, chapter 11 and 14, it says, Prosperity and adversity, life and death, poverty and riches come of the Lord. All right, so all of the prosperity, adversity, you know, bad times, etc., etc., it all comes from the Lord. All right. I got one other scripture. And then I'm just going to close off after that. You know, not to make this too, 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 too long. <laughs> it's lucky I'm just getting a little bit fun with it. But it says here. 
um, here that this is uh, the book of Ecclesiastes, the Cuss and the Prophet, chapter 40 and 25. And it says, gold and silver, all right, kasap, right, for, for uh, silver, make the foot stand short in gold. And this is real wealth. But counsel is esteemed above them both. You know, that's being counsel, wise counsel in Yahweh Shem El Shai, you know, wisdom, all right. It's, it says, riches and strength lift up the heart, but the fear of the Lord is above them both. There is no want in the fear of the Lord, Yahweh by Shemel Shai, and it needeth not to seek help. I'm going to skip down to verse 28. It says, My son, lead not a beggar's life, for it's better than to die than to beg. And you have it where, you know, people literally are begging. They have to beg, build debt collectors, you know, just to keep the lights on, keep you know, uh, you from repoing the car, et cetera, et cetera. This is under the system, which is a pit. It means, okay, system means pit. We can go into the etymology of the Edomites, the elite of them, okay? It says here that with the level of debt Americans have saddled themselves with, easy to see why they are blaming the cost of living as opposed to oppressive monthly debt pay repayments. However, only 13% say credit card debt prevents th th them from saving, while 13% say the student don't loan debt prevents them from saving. Yeah, many people, of course, went into that whole trap of going to college, that whole debt. Scheme, you know, the you know, you of course seeking to get a high paying job only to receive a debt, okay, a heavy debt, you know, in which then you, I mean, for the most part, you know, you, you're getting it where if you know you don't pay that, you know, money, okay, they of course pursue after you, all right. And for the most part, you can't find a job within that field that you, you know, for the, you're trying to get, you know, to be successful in. You know, you're overqualified or something like that in most cases these times. And you're set, still stuck with that whole education, that piece of paper, and that debt, okay? Which, what's that's going to help you? When well, you got to pay bills still after college. You got to pay your living bills, expenses. You can't find a job, you know, within the actual um, field in which you took out, the, you know, your time to pursue that education, that degree. All right. This is all expensive. It says the truth is the sooner we all individually and as a society get a grip on our debt and overspending, the sooner could we be on our way to real wealth and prosperity. You know, and real wealth and prosperity isn't going to be achieved, all right, on this side. You got to have the kingdom, okay, for us Israelites, all right. We need, of course, the so-called white man to be destroyed and out of the way, okay, in order to prosper and be at the head and not the tail and not seeking for the... Uh, you know, being that for one of all things under this damn double, as you know, you're reading the scriptures in the book of Deuteronomy 28. All right, because right now we're the tail, right now, not the head. It says it's an easy journey to start, but it's not an easy one to go th through with. One simply find themselves buried in debt and digging out could take years. You may never get digged, never may never get out. All right. You know, so with that, you know, I'm just going to close out. You know, as you see, this is really your wallet is a bag with holes. All right. Akim, of course, you're suggested to live a minimalist lifestyle for the most part if you can. You know, certain brothers, of course, are going to be blessed with certain things to help, of course, out the brotherhood. You know, but 
for the most part, we're just minimalist. We ask, of course, the Lord to give us uh, neither, uh, you know, basically feed us, give us our daily bread. You know, of course, um, you know, not uh, just just enough for us not to, of course, curse him. All right. Simple as that, you know, well, as I'm roughly paraphrasing one scripture, though, uh, not too less, you know, not too, not, you know, crazy where we would, you know, not seek not after the Yahweh Hashim Shah. With that, Americans are in debt, deep trouble, or they're in debt <laughs> for the most part. It says 23% save nothing from their paycheck, and this is a true statement, all right? If not, even worse. With that, I'm gonna say, call all you like your help. I should my shabbat 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 shab